Okay, let's go, uh, let's shift gears just a little bit. And if you scroll all the way down, go to TSF case three. So uh, a long time ago, there was a concept, um, and, and I'll give a lecture on this in the TSF lab about digital planning and CAD planning. And I have to be honest, I haven't drawn a line on a TSF x-ray in a long time. In about two years, I've planned, I think, over about 100 to 150 frames, uh, all with this CAD program, and it's extremely accurate. Uh, there's really, and there's other programs that are coming out, I think, but this is just the one I actually developed with some of the engineers uh, under the guys at that time, it was Trauma CAD slash Voyant, and, uh, and there was actually a spatial CAD that came out, but that was bought by Smith and & Nephew and shelved and never came to fruition. And so this is actually a better program. And it's a very simplistic way of, of planning and the fact that there are pattern recognition. Uh, I took animal, behavior, I think that's what it's called, animal behavior in college. And so I don't know, anybody take animal behavior? Any uh, biology majors? So it was really funny. I mean, it was supposed to be a, an easy course. It actually turned out pretty hard. And we had to do all these experiments with all these different animals, you know, anywhere from goats and roaches and chickadees. And, but if you put a bunch of little chicks on the ground and you cut out a piece of paper that looks like a hawk, right, a big bird, and you hold it over in the, and you create a shadow, what happens? They scatter. Right? They, they see that imprint. Something's imprinted in their brain that they know that this shape is bad and I better run. Just like if you're in the ocean and you see something that looks like a shark, you know that's bad, you swim a lot faster. In the same way, I can put silhouettes up on the wall. I can put a silhouette up of femur and a tibia. And I can say, which one's a femur, which one a tibia? And you can pick them out very easily. I can, and just like when you look at these <laughs> schematics, you're like, that doesn't look right. So. If you had a program that you could grab your image and take something that doesn't look right and make it look right, you'd be amazed how accurate you are. So at this point, just click each image, <coughs> hit next, go to deformity, and it automatically throws you in. And this is very important to calibration, obviously, because you're, you're telling the computer where this exactly is, and it's going to calculate some uh, parameters for you. So select the first one, select AP, select right. It doesn't find the little mag ball, so hit manual. I'm sorry. It's the other left or the other right, whatever. <laughs> I'm still working on that. So hit manual, thank you. That's really important, uh, so be careful. And if you hit circle and then click on the image, it gives you the circle tool, kind of adjust it to fit. Drag it down to the little ball. That's a 2.5 or a 2.5 centimeter, 25 millimeter sphere. Hit accept. Do the same. Now you can see how it automatically found the mag ball. It usually does that. Put lateral, left, and hit accept. And so you had the limb alignment. We've done that. You can do limb alignment if you like. But if you go to the TSF, hit TSF. It's going to ask you make sure it's pointed to the right and all of a sudden you have your template. And so all you do is simply adjust three things. You adjust your ring, you adjust your master tab, and you adjust your osteotomy site. And so if you take this little line, just make them mimic your ring. Remember, it's the inner, inner diameter of the ring that we're measuring in the TSF. Again, you can zoom in, take the little square, and this little square you want to put right over your master tab. Then you grab your osteotomy and you want to line it up with your osteotomy site. And you'll notice when I grab my osteotomy, it moves in both planes. If I grab my ring, the osteotomy moves with it. So once you finish your AP, you go to your sagittal. If you want to just concentrate on one image, just double click it. If you want to go back to both images, you can double click it again. Grab your little ring, you can toggle it, you can lengthen it or shorten it, you can tilt it. Again, and this is a little bit of art, right? In the middle of all this accurate measurements, you're, this is the front of the ring, that's where the tab is. That's where the second hole is, this is where the inner diameter is. Now some of that's a little bit, you know, you're just used to your frame, I know where it is. This is back in the day where I would take these mounting parameter shots and 
line up these bolts and I don't do that anymore. I don't find the need to. And so there's a giggly saw osteotomy right here. So this young lady, uh, she's I think case number three and the other one if you wanna do the whole digital analysis. She's a young lady who had this fancy knee surgery by a sports medicine guy, did a good job, but left her extended a little bit. And she had a lot of back kneeing and valgus. And uh, so instead of doing two operations and I didn't wanna go back and mess with that plate, about 10 degrees off in the femur, I'm going to extend her tibia 10 degrees. So you can go up to an, a PPTA of 90 and be okay. And not to create, you create a 90 degree, but not a reverse slope. That's just a little clinical tidbit that I was taught. And, uh, and so now we're there. So all you've done is align these two rings, you perform your cut. As soon as you perform your cut, you look over in the little grid, all your mounting parameters have been, have been calculated. So if you're a TSF guy and you understand what I'm saying, all these little calculations, automatically you get your AP offset, your posterior offset, your rotation, and your axial frame offset. That's the most important. That's placing your osteotomy in space according to your ring. And then all you have to do at this point is grab your moving segment and you move it. And as you move it, the deformity parameters are being calculated. And so you can do, again, just like trauma cat, you can do whatever you want. But just like a little chickadee, you can have, you have a tibial imprint in your brain. And I can sit here and say, okay, I want my tibia to look something like this. I want to lengthen her just a little bit because I know that she's a little short and I'm kind of happy. I know that she back knees, so I want to flex her a little bit. And that looks really good. And amazingly enough, if you go back and so how do you check yourself? Well, then you can just make some lines. And I know preoperatively, let's say she was a LDFA of 87 or 88, and I can't really remember, but I'm gonna create a, so I know to extrapolate the angles that I had on her preoperative x-rays, that I'm gonna create a LDFA of 87 degrees. And then I'm going to take this little simple line and overlap it and extend it and see where I ended up. And so you can say, okay, I was close, but I, uh, I went a little bit too far. So then you can simply grab this, tilt the ankle a little bit less, grab your little kind of guideline. I went a little bit too much. And you can do this ad infinitum. I mean, it's not really good for your obsessive compulsive disorder, but it's kind of fun. So now I know I'm perfect. And if I, and I, whatever you want to use as your parameters, if you want to do a full core analysis, a full map ABC, just use your gestalt and see what happens. Wh whatever your personality is, once you're finished, it has calculated all your deformity. So I've done five degrees of valgus, 0.3 millimeters. I, I round up one medial, four apex posterior, one anterior, 16 millimeters short. And then you can fudge your parameters, because we all do. You can say, okay, I want to make it two centimeters, or maybe I just want to go a centimeter of, of length, and I'm not going to shift her. It's all your decision making, but this is how accurate it, it can be. And, and I need to do a study, I just, you know, my spare time, uh, in between diaper changes and everything else that's coming my way. Um, the I have probably, geez, I counted up my cards. Every time I leave the OR with all my parameters, you know, my, I, I tell the rep, make a card. I use the 130, two thirds proximal, 130 full distal. I have six medium struts and here are the numbers, blah, 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 blah. This is a left leg. I want to rotate her leg externally 20 degrees. He makes the card, he throws it on my phone. I go down to my office, usually a week later, and I'm like, oh, I got to do the program. And I type it all in and it's done, and then I throw the card in a pile, and I got this huge pile of cards. And, and Charlie laughed at me one time and told me I'm not invited back to the TSF courses because I don't draw lines. And uh, Gavin, Gavin can tell you, and the other people who use this quite often, it's extremely accurate. And uh, in my residual programs, and you can ask the other people who've used this, uh, my residual programs are almost nil. I mean, sometimes I'll tweak the rotation a little bit, but I used to have these wavy regenerates because I was always kind of sailing the ship and uh, it's, it's become very nice. So if you want to, you can play. I'm going to show you another case and, and I want you to do it all by your lonesome. Um,
And you can also, if you do your alignment like I've been showing you, you can do autocorrect and all of that good stuff. That's how, Trevor, that's how you do it, right? You do the core and you do autocorrect. And, and so that's, and that's a very simple method. I might start doing that too. And so there's all kind of ways. <laughs> and Gavin, you use this, don't you? Do you use it a lot? Yeah, so, so ask people, you know, I'm a little biased because this is kind of like my little pet project I've been working on for years. And, and hopefully it's going to take a new leap forward into the mobile platform and maybe some other developments, who knows. Uh, but if you go down to TSF case number, I think, case number two, my disclaimer, this is a eight-year-old maybe. Christmas Eve, sledder, broke his tibia, came in the hospital. Um, I'm a pediatric orthopedist. How many pediatric tibia fractures do you need to put a TSF on? Probably less, less than 5% uh, of the time. So I get, I get lambasted with, oh my God, I can't believe you did this. I've taken care of lots of fractures. And so I don't put a TSF on everything, even though that's what it looks like. Um, but my rule is if you're very unstable, you get fixed. And so I am not going to chase a tibia fracture like I did 10 years ago with five casts, you know, wedging casts. It's, it's not worth it for you or for the patient. And so I've converted many patients who have failed initial casting and you can try initial casting. It's going to rotate and shorten, angulate some, uh, but with five casts, could I have done this with a cast? Maybe. And if I am in Grenada on my mission trip, it's getting a cast and maybe a couple wires or something else I can, I can figure out in the wild as Dr. Barr kind of showed us. But, uh, but in the United States or in a, in a modern uh, medical facility, if you have a bad tibia fracture in an adolescent, pre-adolescent, this is an absolute tibia machine. It affords you a couple nice things, four pins, maybe six, six poke holes, your patient will be up and running, you know, within a couple of weeks, they'll be training again if they're athletes, which I take care of quite a few in my previous life. And, um, and what's also nice is you can take this big swollen angry leg, take it to the OR within 45 minutes, have a couple rings on, maybe even 30 minutes, and you actually compress the bone, push the two ends together, and you bayonet it and you soften everything. All the tension's gone. You don't do an acute correction. I learned the hard way very early on as a, as a newbie, and, and that's not good. So go ahead and go through this, and all you have to do is pick your lines, put your rings on your proximal frame, and then you align your osteotomy with the fracture and make it straight. But that's just my disclosure, so I don't get any nasty. Like, I can't believe you do this to all the children. I don't. But I did on this night because it was Christmas Eve. Now I'm the token Catholic, I had to get home. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, no, no, choose deformity, choose deformity. So let me go back, I'll, I'll open this back up again. So again, case number two, TSF, you need to select both images, and then next, and then deformity. That's where the TSF lives, is in deformity, even though it's trauma. Real important, again, to know your left from right, which I'm working on, and hit accept. And then you hit spatial frame. Make sure you flip it so it's pointing anteriorly and start aligning your, your rings. And so it'll say, are you looking to the right? And then you can say yes or no. And that's, that's just how it's oriented. Yes. Uh, the question is, are these parameters accurate? They're very accurate. And, and initially when I, when I developed the program, and that's why I got to do a study, is I took about 10 patients and I planned it both ways. The old paper and pencil way, uh, dedicated x-rays in the operating room, magnification. And then I took them in a folder and then I went and I planned it with this and I compared them. And they're extremely accurate. And, and I have, I probably have, I mean, there's a couple of studies that can be done to look at the accuracy and look at the number of residual programs that change, you know. So I could look at these hundred cases and then go back to a, the previous hundred that I planned on paper and pencil. Because anecdotally, I'm never running residuals in the clinic. And I can feel that because I get way behind. So 
if I have 10 frames coming in and, and I have telling my residents, my fellows, and we're all scrambling to do residual programs, I remember the days where it was just a very big hassle. I would say at least the same. Yeah, I th and clinically, I, I see no difference. And the residual, really no need for a residual. Now, so certain things, I think it's very important with TSF, you can't measure rotation, so the axial plane. And sometimes you, you might be uh, with contractures and with deformities, even though we can estimate length, that's something else you have to look. So my residuals that I do are mainly for rotation or adding or compressing length. So at the very end, when I have it aligned, I'll have the patient stand. And then I say, well, I want to lengthen another centimeter, and I want to rotate the foot outward five degrees. It's usually, it follows a course. I rarely have to stop in the middle of a program and adjust, which I used to do a lot in the past. And I think some of it has to do with the accuracy of the mounting parameter measurement. And uh, it just seems to be really good. Yes, it, you can, if you, and I'll show you, if you want to do, So at, at this stage, if you click on, so if you align your rings, and if you wanted to use the core, and I probably should get Trevor to come up here and show you a case, how he does it. Um, and you have this aligned. And I'm just quickly putting this on just so we're somewhere near. Then just like you did for the analysis, what you can do as you can, you click on your AP and go over your right tibia and choose proximal tibial line. Now, you haven't done a joint analysis, so it doesn't know where to put it, so you can, you can grab it and you can, and for this age of a child, I would use the femoral condyles as the tibial line, as a guesstimation. And then you might say, well, I kind of like it just like this and then use a simple line for the distal tibia. Right side, I'm still struggling, sorry. And then put a simple line here. And you can do it in the sagittal plane as well. And you can see that there's no, uh, and I'll use, so essentially, I don't see a whole lot of deformity in the sagittal plane. And then you can perform your cut. You can auto align. And it gives you your deformity parameters. All right, and you can click. You can auto align that one. There's really no alignment. So you can do that if you want to and say, hey, and, and that's what Trevor does. Uh, in my mind, you have to remember that you gotta tell the computer because I bayonet them and they're just gonna bring it over, but you gotta lengthen first and come over and things like that. There's ways to manipulate the TSF program to do that, but if you wanna know your parameters, this is it. And then you can say, well, I know I wanna add 10 millimeters of shortening. That's how easy it can be.